Hi, my guest today is John Erickson, who's running for school committee. How you doing, John? Very well, Kevin. Thank you. Yourself? Good, thanks. Uh, just for the record, my co-host Al Holman is off sick today, so John, it's just you and me. So, last year you ran for school committee and narrowly lost. This year you're running again. What's the big attraction for you? Well, the big attraction, Kevin, um, the school committee is vital to the community. Um, it's a vital part, uh, clearly for the education of our children, but uh, socially and economically, it's the center of our community. And I think I would be an asset to be on the committee um, in making some of the, de the decisions that affect this town. How so? Uh, in what way would you be an asset? Well, it comes down to, I think, decision making. I have a history of making good decisions for this town. Um, and I have the experience, the education, and the disposition to continue to do so. Uh, what's your experience? Well, I've, you know, for the past 10 years been working for the town as the assistant building commissioner and now the building commissioner. And, you know, every day I have to make decisions that, you know, affect the town and the citizens of this town. Okay. What do you think are the biggest issues confronting the school system over the next three years? Well, the biggest issues are certainly, you know, building and implementing the new Woodland School, um, the budget and, you know, the, the, the ELL mandates that are stressing the, the system right now. Okay, e ELL is the English uh, language learner yes. issue. Yeah, there's, there's a number okay. of mandates that, you know, are handed down by the state that the school has to comply, wi comply with. Um, and, you know, it's fairly well known that some of them are unfunded. And, you know, I don't know all of the issues that are stressing it, but I look forward to getting involved and, you know, trying to help solve some of those stresses. Okay. Uh, what about technology? We've been hearing a lot about the fact that the uh, technology in the school system isn't as um, robust or up-to-date as it should be. Yeah, that's clearly now being recognized as a big problem. Um, you know, being an employee of the town, I have, you know, firsthand experience with the people involved with the technology department. Three years ago, roughly four years ago, there was a, you know, there was a big change in personnel, which certainly had something to do with, you know, the position that we're in today. Um, and I've mentioned that last year, that that was a big concern of mine. Um, clearly, I'm not a technology expert. I don't know the answers, answers to solving these problems, but um, we need to put the people in place and enable people that are in place to solve this going forward. Okay. Do you think they're getting the support they need right now? Uh, right now, I think the, the infrastructure is, is lacking. Clearly, the, not, not meaning the hardware and the software, but the personnel. Uh, maybe not today, but in recent months, uh, up until this year. Right. Well, we did go through two technology directors in the town, uh, one after the other, uh, without them getting a lot done. Uh, yeah. The current guy, Mr. Blevis, seems to have some staying power. Yeah, Mr. Blevis certainly seems to have his hand on the situation, but he's you know he's starting way behind the eight ball. You know that was indicated in a recent school committee meeting. Uh, it was brought up by one or several members, um, and it's spot on. You know. The one information director, uh, IT director that's been in place, not the individual, but just the fact that there was one for the past several years, was clearly not enough. You know, and it, it was a success for a long time with one individual, but that was because of the individual in, in my mind. It, it, the program was set up for failure with just one or even two employees. Yeah, well, if it's who, I, uh, I think you're referring to uh, Rob Bennell. That was because he would work 20 hours a day. He would work 20 hours a day, and um, he just has an amazing skill set. Right. Um, so we talked about the new Woodland School. Um, what are the challenges that presents? Well, well, first is getting it built. But first is getting it built. Or obviously um, you're going to play a role in that no matter what is the building commissioner. Yeah, I'll certainly play a role in it. I'll play the role that I play, you know, in every construction project within the town, which is, you know, performing inspections, making sure that it meets building code. Um, I'd have a much more vested interest in this school being on the school committee because there's a number of specifications that the project needs to meet um, that are put in by the school board, uh, Woodland School Building Committee, um, and we need to ensure that they, you know, that they're met. The architects 
spec them all out, um, spent hours and hours preparing all these specifications and plans, um, and now they need to be met. And again, many specifications will meet, or many products can meet the spec can meet building code, but not necessarily the specifications that are that have been put in place. In other words, they do the bare minimum to meet what's required. Yeah, we've had we've had school projects in the past that have met the minimum and failed, failed failed in use, and right. had to be replaced. Okay. Now you're a product of the Milford School System, correct? Yes, I am. Is that another reason why you're running? Oh, absolutely. I think um, you know the Milford School System certainly served me well over the years. Um, I was successful in the system. I you know got a good education after the system, uh, after graduating, and um, you know it's again it served me really well. And um, you know the roughly 300 kids that graduate every year, I'm looking for it to do the same for them. Okay. What's given you the burning desire to run, though? I mean, you, you, you know, you ran and lost last year. You're running again this year, and usually when people run year after year, it tells me, at least, they really want the position. Well, I do. I mean, I had, I had the desire to become a member last year, um, and I clearly got a lot of support. Um, I had so many people reach out to me, people I hadn't seen in, you know, in many years. Um, so, you know, given how close I came last year and all the support that I, that I received, um, it just inspires me to run again and, and you know, become a, a good contributor to the Milford School System. Okay. One of the things I keep reading about um, local education failing is the fact that the personnel in charge, usually the superintendent, doesn't stick around. Uh, in fact, I think I've read the average tenure of a school superintendent in Massachusetts is less than two years. Milford were a little different. Um, Bob Tremblay is now on his seventh or eighth year. He's got a contract for another three. Uh, what's your position on the leadership right now in the, in the school department? Well, I think we have great leadership in place. I think, you know, Dr. Tremblay may be the longest tenured superintendent in at least recent history, recent being he is. He's also the longest-serving superintendent in the Metro West area. Yeah. So I think, you know, we have a we have a very successful school system. We have a you know a great individual in place as our superintendent, and you know my goal as a school committee member is to support the administration, support the administration, support the the educators that are in place because we have a we have a a bunch of great people, and you want to do the best you can to keep those people. Okay. And, you know, in addition, enable them to do their jobs. Are there any changes that you, th you think need to be made in terms of school policies or um, issues like that? Uh, nothing specific, but I do look forward to, you know, getting involved with the policy making. You know, my analogy is it's, uh, the, you know, school policy is, you know, very much like any building code or um, any trade code, wiring, electrical, and you know, they always have running changes. Um, when something's not working, you need to address it. Okay. Um, you and I have talked over the last two years about uh, the role of a school committee person uh, when we've discussed it uh, for the newspaper side of the, the town crier. In reality, the school committee person's role under state law is limited to hiring and firing a superintendent. We, we kind of covered that one. Uh, negotiating the school contracts. Those are usually done by the professionals with guidance for you guys. Uh, any, any thoughts on, uh, on those things? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, myself included until recently, the role of a school committee member is, is vastly misunderstood. You know, right. I'm, they're, I'm they're, trying to go over legally what they are. There, there. Are, you know, I want to say seven key roles that you serve, which is, um, you know, appointing um, and reviewing the performance of the superintendent, right? Uh, assistant superintendent, business agent, uh, special education director, school nurse, um, and several other individual positions. A and that's that's it in terms of hiring. Um, right, and then there's, there's policy. There's policy making. The budget and contracts with teachers. And, and those are the, those are the biggest points. Right. Um, in, in, in reality, though, a lot of your calls come down to the bus route isn't working, 
my son didn't make a team, my daughter didn't yeah, do the, this. Well, there's a lot it's of that. It's the day-to-day -day stuff that people expect. You know, I, I, I do want to back up just for a minute because, you know, you mentioned, we mentioned the four, or four key roles that the school committee member right. serves, um, and one of them being the collective bargaining negotiation. And, you know, naturally, a, you know, the committee reminds uh, the, kit, the committee depends on, you know, legal counsel to help them with that. But, right. you know, if I get on the s school committee, I can be a complete member and participate in all of those, yeah. all of those job functions, which, you know, hasn't always been the case with committee members. Right. But in, moving in, in most towns, sadly, the Massachusetts uh, Teachers Association comes in with a template contract that they're going around the state with and tries to negotiate that as opposed to something individual for the town itself. Well, um, naturally, I don't have any experience of that yet, but I'm looking forward to, you know, becoming a part of that process. And, you know, this year is a, you know, renegotiation of the, the current contract. Okay. But back to, you know, what you mentioned about parent complaints, bus routes, um, children's activities. You know, that's certainly not the role of a school committee member um, to be personally involved in that. And I think that comes back to what I was saying earlier, which is supporting the administration. You know, letting them do their jobs, enable them to do their jobs, and holding them accountable, you know, when things don't go exactly right. But not interfering in the day-to-day -day operations. Not at all, in my opinion. That, that would not be my um, ambition. Okay. Um, what other thoughts uh, do you have on, on the direction of the schools? You happy with them? Uh, yeah, I'm very happy with them. You know, I think they're, I think they're a success. I think when I, you know, I haven't got the list yet this year, but when I reviewed, you know, the schools that um, high school seniors applied to and were accepted to in the last, you know, I reviewed the last five years roughly uh, in my preparation for assessing the system, and I think it's, um, I think we have kids going, getting accepted into some, you know, first class colleges, and um, that speaks volumes about the system. Okay. Um, the Finance Committee has asked for uh, level funded budgets for the next fiscal year. Obviously, if there's any increases in costs that you have to cope with and you're told to level fund the budget, you're in reality cutting something to deal with those cost increases. Do you think the schools are supported enough in the, at budget cycle time? Um, in a word, no. You know, I've had conversation with individual members of both the school committee and of the finance committee at various times, casual conversations, and you know, the message that I'm hearing is that they're not getting as much as they probably need and possibly could get. That, that's interesting. I'd love to hear which school committee, uh, I mean, which finance committee members are saying that because uh, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but when you go to a finance committee meeting, everybody's sort of in lockstep. Well, yes, this is what we'll do. Uh, I'm of a different belief. I'm of a belief that if you want to invest in something or uh, raise it to a new level, you, you selectively give a department an increase. Well, I think it should be a selective process. Um, you know, to an extent, you have to stay within your budget, and if one area needs more attention financially, then another area is going to have to suffer. And we do that with the town budget. You right. know, things, things move around. You know, the electric, the utility costs this fiscal year are projected to be about $250,000 more than, than anticipated. Well, there's, there's room in that budget from, from everything that I'm gathering to, you know, absorb that cost. Uh, through the free cash that's been set aside is what I'm hearing. Uh, no, I've heard, well, I'm hearing from other than free cash within the, within the different There, there, are, there are ways. I mean, the, 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 the hidden secret, I think, about municipal budgeting is there is always somewhere where there is a little bit of wiggle room so that when emergency comes, uh, you can transfer the money uh, without really affecting things. Well, certainly there's wiggle room. Uh, and it comes down, I think, also to what, what do you want to provide to the community? What do you want to provide to the school system? How, 
how much do you want to achieve and what does it take to do that? Um, you know, we heard at a recent school committee me meeting um, in, with regards to IT, tell us what you need. Well, you know, as a school committee member, we need to go and tell the finance committee what we need and uh, naturally justify it. And if it can't be level funded, um, you know, at that point, we'll let the town meeting folks decide. Well, to be fair to the finance committee in, in town meeting, the finance committee has been very generous with the schools over the, over the last couple of years about taking into account the unfunded mandates and things like uh, special ed. Uh, this year they're talking about the English language learner program, um, transportation costs that the state decides whether or not to fund. Uh, the finance committee has been very generous about looking at those outside of whatever budget structure they placed on and giving the school committee enough to deal with those things. So, but I, but I agree with you. If you want to make an investment in something, you, you can't deal with a, a level fund or even a 2% cap or whatever the, the yeah. limit is that year. No, absolutely. And this wasn't meant to be, you know, uh, any kind of a hint that the finance committee isn't being generous or supportive, but, you know, that's, that's the position that I take in the, you know, the outlook that I bring to the, to the committee. You know, if we need to fight for it, we need to fight for it. Yeah, I, I, I think too often you sort of have a complacency where people say, okay, this is all we get this year. This is what we deal with. Yeah, and, and you know, this, the system's been very successful throughout the years, but, you know, again, the position is if there's something we need, you know, we, if, we can, if we have to justify it, if we can justify it, then we may need to fight for it. Okay. Um, so we've talked about woodland, we've talked about technology. Um, what other issues do you see coming up with schools? I mean, those, those are the, um, the big issues. You know, we've talked about the unfounded mandates. Um, you know, overall, I think everybody will agree that our school system and our, and our town in general is in, you know, very good shape, both financially and, and otherwise. How about the uh, middle school reuse uh, issue? Do you have any feelings on that for Middle School East? Yeah, I, I certainly have uh, feelings on that. I should ask, um, are you on that study committee? I'm not on the study committee, no. Okay. Um, and I haven't heard very much about what they've, you know, what they've, what, where it stands right now, what, what direction they're leaning, what information they have. The, the um, last I heard, they were going to hire a consultant to help them evaluate the building. Yeah, that's what I heard too, but the question was where was it being funded from and, you know, I don't know if, if they've hired a consultant yet. I haven't heard much. Um, from what I understand, they did a tour possibly last week um, just to, you know, evaluate the building as is. Um, but there's been, you know, there's been some discussion of leasing out a portion of the building um, for education use. And, you know, I've had conversations with people over the last year or so about you know, what else can the school system use that for? You know, if they can, if they can lease out a portion and bring in revenue, um, do we move facilities down there? Do we move um, administration down there at some point and open up and open up space at the high school? The biggest comment I hear from people is we can't afford to lose the uh, the gym. Oh, that's a comment I hear repeatedly, especially with. You know, we have a 12-year-old at home that's playing basketball, and, and scheduling practices is, is um, extremely difficult for these coaches. You know, especially with losing this year with losing the youth center. Um, so I think if we can at all maintain that gym, it would be in um, it would be a boon to the athletic part of the portion of the community. Yeah, what I, what I hear is is keep the gym. Uh, possibly move the school administration down to free up more room at the high school, and uh, growth for town hall needs. Yeah, that's been kicked around a little bit as well, and I also hear, you know, the thought of moving the Family Resource Center down there. You know, a lot of people go into and the Shining Star. Family Resource Center, um, they have business to do at the town hall at the same time, so, you know, it's a convenient location for that. So, if you know, if enough revenue can be generated by leasing out a portion of it, um, ideally maintaining the same use, um, because right now that that building is not sprinklered. You know, change of use would require a sprinkler system, and you know the associated cost that goes with it. Um, but if we can generate enough revenue and still have it for municipal use and educational use for our for our own community, 
that sounds like a win-win, but you know, with all that said, I'd be looking to hear you know, the input from the, the reuse committee to see, right. you know, to hear all their thoughts and all the information that they spent all these hours, yeah. you know. Not a lot through. of parking with that building, though. That's, that's an issue for anything that goes there. That's an issue for anything that goes there. Yeah. Okay. John, you, you mentioned having a 12-year-old a, a at home. Um, I know you yourself are not a parent. Those are um, your partner's children. Yes. And so the, the question is, um, how can somebody who's not a parent want to run for school committee? Well, I, I have gotten that, that question a number of times. Um, and the easy answer is, and the true an truthful answer is, I just want to help the community. I've lived here my whole life. Um, I just built a new house um, a stone's throw away from Brookside. You know, I look out my, my back windows and I'm looking at Brookside School. Uh, and I just think I have something to offer. And at the same time, I, in my professional life, I have the time to, to do it at this, at this stage in the game, both in my personal and my professional life. And, you know, one of the things I, I think helps me in this situation is I don't have any biological children, I, but I have, you know, as you said, a domestic partner. Um, so I have kids at home under my roof, and I think that gives me, you know, a little bit different perspective. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a parent, but yet I, I live that lifestyle um, in a lot of ways. Well, that's true. I mean, I, I mean, although uh, uh, the, the children are Rosanna's and her ex-husband's, they're, they're not yours. You right. are raising children. Absolutely. And anybody that's been through my door, you know, <laughs> has seen it. Uh, that, that's true. So we don't want to give the impression that you're, you're somehow claiming to be a parent, but not claiming no, to be a parent. No, not at all. <laughs> I know someone brought it up in the debate last year that, uh, you know, you do have children, but yet you're not a... Yeah, but again, it's, you know, um, I, you know... But it does... It, I'm it, involved in a parenting process. I'm not a parent by any means. Um, but it does give you, I think, a view into the school system gives me a view into the school system and you know you know a lot have said it's an unbiased view by you know it not being a biological situation so right. um, I believe in that um, I think everybody that knows me believes that and believes in me and uh, I just like to get more people to know me and, and understand me and you know and gain confidence in me now you mentioned you have time in your personal and professional life it's fairly well known uh, one town official has criticized you for running, saying it would take away from your daily job as building inspector, building commissioner, excuse me. How do you answer that? Um, I, think, I think it's painfully simple. I have a job where I work eight hours a day, and that leaves me eight hours for what I will. You know, um, everyone else or almost everyone else that I know that's been a school committee member also has a full-time job. I don't see how my situation is is any different. Um, my full-time job, I believe, gives me a little different insight than, you know, a lot of people because I'm in the town all day, every day. I work here, I live here, I sleep here. You know, I'm not, I'm not out the door 10, 12 hours a day somewhere else. You know, all day I'm interacting with the citizens of Milford. And, you, you know, you get a a little bit different perspective when you do that. And I know that because I haven't always done that. You know, I haven't always been working in Milford yeah. for Milford. Okay, so that should put it into that issue. I, I, I would hope so. <laughs> uh, all right. What else would you like people to know about you? You said you'd like the people to get to know you. Well, I don't know how you exactly quantify that, but you know, most of what we've just we've just spoken about. Um, you know, I have I've had a lot of support in the past because I think people know me. Um, and you know, all I'm all I'm offering is is what I am. Okay, so you're not running on any given single issue or burning desire like uh, we've had school committee members run because uh, their friend the uh, coach uh, was dismissed yeah there was uh you know there was a lot of controversy over that in the past few years 
Um, and I've, I keep getting that question, you know, why are you running or why are you really running? And it's really just, you know, to try and contribute. Nothing more, nothing less. There's, you know, a lot of people have the, the notion that, okay, you're running for school committee, what's next? Because that's been a, it's been a pattern that people move from school committee to um, other offices. Um, well, all three of the current selectmen did serve on the school committee. Yeah. Um, clearly not, not an ambition of mine. You know, I work full time for the town. I have, you know, uh, I couldn't be selectman, and um, nor is that ever an aspiration <laughs> I would have. You like being building commissioner? Uh, very much so. What do you like about it? Um, it's just the perfect, perfect job and function um, based on you know a career's worth of um, experience and education. You know, it brings it brings together all the facets of my life that I've been involved in. Um, you know, with the from the engineering background um, to working as a contractor for you know 20, 25 years, you know, before getting the full time position, um, and it's it's just really a um, it's really a perfect situation for me professionally. Yeah, I've noticed when I've been in the office, the uh, the other folks in the office tend to come to you and ask you to help interpret the questions on the code. Oh yeah, I mean. I mean, code interpretation is is clearly a big part of that job, um, and it's very very detailed. You know, it, you know, with between fire prevention regulations and structural issues, uh, the zoning bylaw. Yep. It's um, you know, it really is a complex field. And you're not afraid to enforce things when you have to. No, certainly not. Um, you you know, you have a set of regulations, and they need to be met. It's it's really. You know, very akin to being in school department. Yeah, very much so. That's why you know I made the analogy earlier to you know the school policy being similar to construction codes. Okay. You know, and, and zoning laws. John, we're just about out of time. Um, any last words for for, uh, for the voters? Uh, you're seeking uh, their support. Any last words to them? Well, I think I think we've covered it all. But um, I just hope that they'll have the confidence in me that I'll be you know, a rational, unbiased member um, that can make the good decisions, uh, also make difficult decisions because um, clearly those aren't easy by definition, right? Difficult. Um, I hope they'll have the confidence in me to put me on the school committee.